uh, make a little video here about the SCAR 17 gas system and some of the things required to suppress. That's right. So, most people with SCARs know about the Parker Mount Machine, gas jets, and what those are used for. So, I'm going to kind of go over what I have done and the results so far. So, start with a little bit of uh, background information about the SCAR gas system. I don't think a lot of people understand. So, when you're talking about the SCAR gas regulator, people know there's two holes and then these two smaller ones. Now, what's often said is that these are to regulate the amount of gas, whether it's standard or so-called suppressed setting, and they think these are different to regulate gas. Uh, come on, come focus. But what I have noticed is actually these two ports are pretty much the same size. And the regulating effect comes from these two smaller ports on the side. So when you switch this regulator to the suppress setting, what's happening is you're still getting the same amount of gas into the regulator. However, you are now venting more gas out the side via these two small ports in this channel in the plug, which lines up with the small channel right here in the gas block. Uh, you can't really see that too well, come on. You kind of see it right there. So when you switch it to suppress setting, what's happening is those two small ports on the regulator are lining up with this and you're essentially just bleeding off more gas. However, those two main ports aren't regulating anything any differently. So, when you get into the Parker Mount Machine gas jets, you are switching out the orifice size for the amount of gas that's feeding into the regulator and against the piston, obviously. So, according to Parker Mount Machine website and other information online, it is said that the stock gas jet size for a 17S is 1.50. Now, I have found that to be pretty accurate. So, this is my SCAR OEM gas jet. Now, I don't have any pin gauges. However, checking it with some uh, drill bit sizes and miking those, I'm pretty sure it's about 1.45 to 1.50. So, what I have done is got a few of the Parker Mount Machine different sizes. And I started with a 1.30 and tested it out with. So I have the Dead Air Chemo Brake and I'm running a Sandman S on here. So with the 1.30 gas port from Parker Mount Machine and running, uh, let's see, it was Ingman 308 spec, just ball ammo with suppressor off and gas setting set to suppress, I was getting probably 60-70% function, uh, fail to lock back, and fail to feed sometimes. With the gas regulator set to 12 o'clock normal position, I was getting full function, 100% um, and decent ejection, without feeling overwhelming. So, I'm okay with that, running this in 12 o'clock with no can on to have, you know, full reliability, with the understanding that switch to suppress setting without the suppressor, I may not have 100% function. I'm okay with that to, you know, kind of have a margin of safety for not beating the gun to death while it's suppressed. Now, what I have done is I ordered um, 
one of these factory FN jets from Midwest Gunworks. And it is obviously the 1.20 millimeter uh, factory FN jet. So it's the flathead, just like the OEM, as opposed to the Allen key that you get with the Parker Mount machine. So Parker Mountain comes in, you know, 130, 135, 140, kind of go up by fourth out increments. So buying this one at 120, my plan is to bore it out with a number 55 drill bit, which should make it 1.32 millimeter. So just to kind of verify the uh how accurate the parker mount machine gas jets are the 130 i'm currently running in the gas block will not let that number 55 bit pass through so it's when they say 1.30 it's pretty much dead on 1.30 so instead of modifying the parker mount machine one Initially, I'm going to modify oh, this 1.20 with this drill bit and give me roughly 1.32 and see how that runs unsuppressed on both gas settings. And if that's a good balance and I get 100% on, you know, function on both gas settings whether the can is on or not, I might run that. And if that works out, I will probably modify my 1.30 Parker Mountain Machine Jet in order, just because they're a little bit nicer, they have the hex head and the tool from Parker Mountain Machine, the gas jet installation and removal tool is pretty nice. Um, I just followed their instructions on how to get the OEM gas jet out, heated up the gas block a little bit. I don't think I even heated it up quite as much as they go over in their video, but you know, just kind of eyeballed it, heated it up just a little bit, and uh, put some downward pressure on it, you know. And the OEM jet came out, so you just kind of go in through the top of the gas block, obviously, and remove that factory one. And then when you install the Parker Mount Machine one, it's the hex, you know, and then you just install it, and it went in super smooth. Uh, kind of backed it out a little bit and went forward, and it kind of cleaned out a little bit of the carbon that was in the, uh, the threads for the gas jets. Um, in order to seat the new gas jet all the way down fully so you can get the um, the plug all the way in and not hang up on the new gas jet. So that went pretty smoothly. Um, and I really like the quality of the Parker Mount Machine gas jets. They are just super uh, well made it looks like and kind of double checking the port size seems to be very accurate to what they are advertising them as. So, just wanted to kind of make this video going over what can be done to help suppress the uh, SCAR system. And this works for the 16 or 17. <clears throat> However, <coughs> excuse me, got the coof. Um, you're going to have to look up what kind of recommended port size you might need depending on barrel length on whether you're running a 16 or a 17 and then uh, kind of go from there. There is some information online on ARFCOM and different places on kind of where to start. That's where I got my initial info and that's why I started with the uh, the 130 and got a 135. I'm sure the 135 would run just fine, and that's what most people are saying with a factory 16-inch barrel. 17S is 
135 is kind of the sweet spot between having full function with the can off and either gas setting. Um, but because, you know, I really want to extend the longevity of my scar and I, you know, so I don't run any aftermarket stuff. I run, you know, the OEM stock. The only upgrades I have are, you know, guys the trigger and then, you know, optic add-on stuff like that. But I run the factory, you know, FN stock with no upgrades, no upgraded buttons or any, you know, nonsense like that because of all the added variables you are introducing if you put something like a KDG stock and all the issues you can have from over gassing already and then you add a can on top of that with the KDG you know aluminum interface you're gonna start busting screws and canting receiver screws in the back so plus I just like the Ugg boot stock with the uh, cheek piece up it fits I don't know it just fits my length of pool my the way I like to present the rifle works perfectly for me so Pretty much completely stock 17 with the Geisley trigger um, running the 1.30 gas jet now kind of mixed results with the can off and suppress setting but full function and that Ingman 308 ammo I'm using is just normal kind of 147 ball spec 308 um, I did run some actual 762 through it and that seemed to actually increase the um, the reliability with the can off and suppressed setting, a little bit higher pressure, I believe. But I was still getting a few fail to lockbacks, etc. So once I kind of uh, modify this uh, factory FN screw to one three two and play around with that, I will. Um, probably stick with that modified to 132 once it um kind of verify function it may not change a whole lot but if i can stick with a 130 or even the new modified 132 i'm gonna do i will probably stick with that because just the recoil the ejection everything feels good with the 130 right now and just a tiny bit more, you know, gas to the system, verifying that the gun will run in any setting, whether the can is on or off, in any weather or, you know. And that's another thing. I'm going to test all this out this winter, you know, in the cold, things like that, and probably go with the 132 that I'm going to make. And then if that works, I will keep this one that I modify as a backup and I will modify the Parker Mount Machine 130 with the 55 drill bit as well just because of ease, ease of getting it in and out with their tool and they're just a little bit nicer in my opinion. So um, that's pretty much it but uh, I definitely wanted to touch on the gas regulation from the plug a lot of people don't know that they think these two holes are different and that is what goes from more gas to less gas but without super precision gauges i you know i can't tell you exactly they are 100 percent the same size but just kind of tinkering, tinkering around with some mics and different drill bits i am fairly certain they are the same size and all the regulation comes from these two exhaust ports. Because in the 12 o'clock normal setting, they are covered up inside the gas block. And it's not until you switch it to suppress setting that exposes those two ports, again, in line with that notch in the gas block. So, um... Scar is an awesome weapons platform. If you're watching this and have one, you know. If you have the money, buy one. If not, you know, 
have your girlfriend or wife open a line of credit and go buy one and then, you know, do with that what you will. So this is my first and only video on YouTube. Um, I am stupid and I am just a regular person. I am filming this on an ATM quality camera with my phone and um, to go easy. And um, if you have any questions, leave a comment, I guess, and I will try to answer them. Um, and I'll stop rambling. So, Scar, it fucks.